Hello everyone, uh, today I'm going to share tips on how to be successful on Upwork as a freelancer and I just want to make a disclaimer, so uh, I'm available on Upwork for I guess a year and a half, maybe two years, I'm top rated, I have 100% uh, job success rate uh, that is available over there, I just got like an invitation for um, skill certifications and then what is more important I work on Upwork as a freelancer for like as a web developer but then on some my personal projects on my brand projects for some skills that I need I um, I'm a client there too so this video is not only my personal opinion and how to be successful but that's also an experience as a client of what I see in other freelancers when they apply for a job when they like when you communicate with them when you work with them and issues that I faced and I have three returning clients at this moment like within this a year and a half so within this time frame my first first client is still my client at this moment and then I had two other projects that are like ongoing um, that clients come back to me for some other work or additional work to the projects that we've done before and of course I have other projects but returning clients that's what shows you when the work is done in a good way, when clients are happy, when clients are willing to get back to your professional skills and not to hire some other freelancing. That's why I think that I have enough skills and knowledge to share it with you. And without further ado, let's get started. And the first skill that is very, very important on both like client side and on freelancer side is responding within a reasonable time. I think, in my personal opinion, the reasonable time is 24 hours. You can check your Upwork profile, you can check your messages, you can check your email at least once a day. Yes, sometimes you can specify that, okay, I'm going on vacation within this time and I won't respond to you. You can have a days off, of course, but then you can download an app and if something is urgent, especially if this is an existing client and he comes to you with a question, you don't have to solve it right now, but at least respond, okay, I got your message, I'm sorry, I have a day off today, I'll come back tomorrow and... Uh, we, we can schedule a call or like, well, let's do this or that. So, I mean, like, just respond to a person that you're not ignoring him. You're not just like unavailable somewhere within a day, two days. I had a project as a client. I had a project where I had a terrible freelancer who is a great professional, like in skills in what he did in like programming, he's great. But then his communication skills, the way he responded like within three days, four days, and you agree on like, okay, the deadline is Tuesday and you agree on that, but then he doesn't respond to you on like Tuesday and then Wednesday and then Thursday and eventually you message him like, I'm sorry, but I'm waiting for a job to be done. And then eventually you message him with a question like, where are you? I'm waiting for a project to you. Like I expected that to be done on Tuesday and from my experience I know that work is not done in time in most cases but I still like we agreed on that time frame why why wouldn't you respond at all like at least something and then the person comes back within like two or three days oh I I was I was off I was sick I was something like we're in 21st century I don't expect you to you know, like, uh, respond me right away. I hate it. I hate clients who ask, like, who don't understand that you can't be available 24-7 and you don't respond within an hour. But within reasonable time, that's what I expect as a client. And then the second point is coming from the first one. So when you respond within 24 hours, if you, as a freelancer, if you told the client that you'll get the work done 
and let's say on Tuesday, the Tuesday is a deadline and something happened, like it's all life, right? And shit happens, you can get sick, your kids can get sick, some personal, some professional, maybe you just feel tired, maybe the project is a little bit more difficult than you expected, right? There are a lot of things that can go wrong and that will affect your like due date for the project. But it is very important to understand that as a freelancer, you have to respond to your client that, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't make it, I can make it on this day. And now the next advice would be to ask to finish a project and get a new one if you are working with the same client. So for one thing, it is easy to track um, if, if you have kind of like project that are uh, that you are able to finish. In my case, those are websites where I work on a website or if you're like a marketing specialist, you might work on a campaign or on, 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 on some part of the work that you can set up as a separate project, then that's what I would recommend you to do because Upwork, it seems like Upwork really cares about your returning clients, uh, about the fact that you get finished projects and clients feedback. Still, you can get a client feedback after 30 days within one project if it is not finished. But from my experience, even for clients, it is sometimes easier to get like the project finished and start the new one, if you can. Again, if your projects are totally continuous, then I guess that's not an option for you. But if you have a returning client, you finish the work, you didn't even close this contract yet, but then um, the client comes back and asks for more work to be done, then that's what I would recommend you to do. Again, you get a feedback, like that's something that is very important is asking for feedback and feedback is not just stars that he'll put uh, on, on like on your work as a rating review. No, in this case, you will get a feedback and not only rating as just like stars, but also a really valuable feedback in like in words that other clients or other potential clients can also read and uh, see, okay, you've been working on something like continuously, you 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 don't start a project a year ago and still continuous and continuous and you no know, like you finish a project you start on something else and you get experience you get like this dynamics is what is really important and also i think that upwork rating like job success score um depends on these two um because yeah it is it is updated like every couple of weeks and you have to like work continuously to get uh, this updated in your favor. And all next tips would be uh, related to the job search on Upwork. So I really care about these items when I do a job search on Upwork. I look into the positions, uh, into the positions, clients information, and I see the clients rating uh, you can see the feedback given to this client, which is very, very important. I had an unfortunate when I didn't really look properly in that. And there were comments that the client is like, um, I don't know, like very strict, for example, or something like this. I'm not the person to communicate in this way. So yeah, I had issues with that client and we finished the project, the work was done, but that wasn't the best communication and the best project I've done, to be honest. And all the next tips would be completely about the job search and Upwork. So when you look for a job and Upwork, I always look for a payment verified uh, from the client. So I don't even apply for any task, any position that doesn't have a check mark for the payment verification on the client's end. Because that's a waste of time. If a client came to like Upwork, for example, just to test things out, 
or to see maybe he'll find somebody on Upwork or like on Fiverr, for example, right? Then the payment verification is where I really feel like that's a trust and that's a signal for me that, okay, this person is like real and I will get paid, especially for the hourly rate, because there is no, like there is no opportunity to have money in escrow there. I guess Upwork now fixed it in the way that you can't even start a project or get an offer or accept an offer until the client verifies the payment method for the hourly rate too. But at the very beginning when I started that, it wasn't the case. So when I had a payment verification unverified, that's where I was like a little bit confused what happens if you finish the work or if like you work a week and then what happens, would you be paid? Um, so right now I really care about this. Also for me personally, that's a sign like a signal of trust uh, of that the client is real. It's easier to get things sorted out when everything is fine with the payment verification. Also, I really look into the client's rating, client's hourly paid time that is applied to other freelancers. So if I see a job posting, for example, where the average payment is like $7, I guess Upwork has a minimum of like three or five dollars per hour, but I live in Canada and seven dollars per hour uh, I wouldn't even apply because it doesn't really make sense for me to find I would say it like a cheap client but don't get me wrong I understand there are different types of work to be done and different payments as well so the average hourly rate paid to other freelancers won't really give you a clear picture but if I live in Canada and I understand that okay the hourly rate is even less than the minimum hourly payment here in like in our province or in any other province of Canada then that's where I wouldn't even apply. When you look for a job don't forget to turn on or off your availability badge on your profile. I'm not sure if that's a thing specifically maybe for like top rated profiles, freelancers, or uh, or is it available for everyone? But if you see this page on your profile, make sure to check it on or off when you're available or not. Because what happens is that you get too many invitations when you're busy and when it's on and then if you accidentally or at some point you put it off and then you finish the projects and you're looking for another one clients look for freelancers too so that availability badge will make sure you appear in that search for a client so and and on the other hand don't waste a client's time if you're not available Mark it as off, that badge as off, so that you don't show up in search, you don't show up as an opportunity for a client, because a client takes time to look through profiles, a client takes time to like um, email you or like message, I'm inviting you to this offer, something like this, and just don't waste your time and don't waste client's time if you're not available. Another important thing that I really feel like that is much more about my experience as a client rather than a freelancer and I, got, I guess kind of like a sense of just you know like logic that you don't apply for a job with less payment that you set in your profile so for example if your payment rate in your profile is set to I don't know let's say like $25 and then you see a job posting and the price range over there is like 10 to 15 dollars and you like oh i need a job and you place an offer with 15 dollars per hour or like 10 dollars per hour that is something that well one thing as a client i see that a person doesn't value himself like there are types of jobs where the responsibility or the work is not as difficult as some other work, right? So that's where the price can be lower. 
but if it is a significant difference as a client i think that the person doesn't even look into like the job posting or job position and like I will apply for to earn anything and that's why i think that it is very important to keep your level and you'll get a level of your clients as a client i don't really trust and i don't understand freelancers who apply to a job position saying they are able to work for like 15 dollars per hour when the rating on their profile is like $30 per hour. I think that a freelancer will be not as interested in the work when he works twice as much for the same amount of money, right? So I wouldn't even consider a freelancer where, who, who applied for like twice as less than they have in the profile. That is my personal opinion. I, I don't claim that it's the right one. I just express my ex experience and my opinion as a client and uh, things that I look into freelancers when I have some job postings. Also, like those bios, like the highlights of your profile are very, very important. So make sure those are really, really up to date all the time. Like look into that every week or every month, depending on how your skills grow, every week or every month, that's what you have to check uh, regularly in order to, like, when you, when you apply to a job and the client sees an old highlights section, an old version of it, that is not what you're currently doing or that is not representing the real situation at this moment, then it would be again just a waste of connections, it would be a waste of resources for you as a freelancer and for the client as a client. Just make sure highlights are there and don't apply to jobs where the payment is much less than what you have in your profile. And next one is very interesting and very important that actually I don't have in my profile. So as a freelancer, I have no portfolio examples uh, in, in my profile. And that's funny because I think as a client, I would like to see portfolio examples. But um, in my case, because that's web development and I had a lot of contracts with NDA, for example, I couldn't share that officially. Like I, I mean, like it's out there online. I can send a link to the existing website and say like, that's the project that I've done. But on the other hand, I can't really show this as a portfolio example because I mean, like that's a web development. And as soon as you pass all the website credentials and everything to a client, in my case, because those are websites, as soon as I pass credentials to a client or like the project is finished, then in a month or two months, the website can look completely different. If anything happened, it can not exist, for example, or it can be completely different in functionality. A client could hire another administrator to the website that will break a lot of things on the website. I don't know, I just feel that it doesn't really work for me. But on the other hand, I have a lot of feedback ratings and that's what important and that's why I get returning clients, I get invitations, I get, yeah, just like offers. So that's why I don't have portfolio, but if you're a designer, if you're a marketing specialist, if you're like a SEO specialist, uh, I don't know, accountant, Upwork has accountants, but I'm not sure what would you put there in a portfolio. But if you have something to put in there, do that. Some people do really care about it. And portfolio examples will always help you with first clients. When you have no ratings, when you have no feedback, and the, all you have is just like a highlights section with no examples of how you perform your job or how you design some stuff, um, then that's where it's difficult to find uh, your like first projects when you have no trust from like clients, you have no ratings, portfolio will help you a lot. And that's it for today. Uh, these were all my tips for being successful on Upwork. Again, I shared this experience from like a standpoint of like freelancing 
and also a client. So I really hope it helped you. Leave a comment uh, in the comment section and see you in the next video. Bye!